Notice that I've got a pass-through on the right side above the microwave and I'm going to create a opening in there and that pass-through is going to be a combination of two different cabinets. The upper section of this cabinet, I'll just move my mouse over it, is going to be uh, just a standard 12 inch in depth cabinet. I have a soffit on the other side of the uh, dining room and then the lower box here for the cabinet will be 16 inches in depth and will extend into the room and will make that cabinet to have a, uh, a double side so that it's a complete pass through and then the opening down below that. So let's explore um, how to, uh, to make that happen. Let's take a perspective view and uh, actually see what we have. I'm going to use the overhead camera. You'll be able to see our soffits. And by the way, um, we'll change some of the colors, but let's just use the material eyedropper, pick up the color off of the door, and then we can apply that onto our, uh, onto our soffit. Now, if we zoom in to the area where we want to place this cabinet, so let's see if we can get the right view and uh, pick up the color and place it on that. What I want to do with the uh, wall cabinet is um, let's go ahead and place that uh, wall cabinet so it bumps right up against that partition. And um, the first thing I want to do is I want to make this about 50 inches wide and our cabinets bump in increments of 3 inches. So the first thing is, is let's just open that up and type in the width of 50 inches our height of, let's see if I can slide that over just a little bit so you can see that. The height is going to be 7 inches on this upper box. The depth at 12 and then the uh, floor to bottom sometimes this might have been easier in the elevation view. Set that to 89 inches. Now on the front of the cabinet um, let's change this to a framed construction and um, I'm going to change the uh, separation that I'm using here to be one inch on the uh, left styles and then on a uh, traditional overlay let's do this um, on the uh, side overlap which is side to side I only want that to overlap um, 1 16th of an inch. So it's going to act like a frameless cabinet in that case. But the vertical overlap, because I have two boxes stacked on one another, I'm actually going to extend that to be 15 16 So that'll actually give me a 1 16th gap on this separation of one inch that we have. And let's see, the last thing I want to do is on the door and drawer style, make that slab glass doors and let's remove the hardware off of those so down here on the door handle let's say none so there's a preview of the cabinet select OK and um, it's difficult to see in this view because we got that partition open let's just uh, turn that layer off for the time being let's just toggle that layer off so we can see what we have here so you can see our uh, our box with the uh, glass on it. I'm going to grab that box. Let's create a copy of it and we'll just pull it down and let's open up that box and this is going to be the box that goes through the opening. In this case we want the height of this cabinet to be 33 inches, same width. The depth, since we want to stick it through the wall, set that at 16 inches. And then the uh, floor to bottom I'm going to set that at uh, 56 inches. And we need to go back to the door and drawer and add our hardware back on. We use the uh, default and that should have picked up the same overlap information since we copied it. I think that's it for that box. Um, check our uh, shelves on that. Number of shelves two shelves. If I wanted to make that manual I could adjust that, but we'll leave that two shelves. Select OK. And there's our cabinet. Now it's poking out so I need to push that through the wall after I add the uh, um, opening in there. And um, let's go ahead and uh, 
I'll make that change here just in a minute. Let's go into our wall elevation. Let me close this view here. Or let me just move over to our wall elevation. And let me take this wall elevation from the other side of the uh, of the room from the dining room. And um, let's use instead of a wall elevation, let's use a uh, full section view so we can actually get beyond the wall, actually get the roof structure so we can see what we have here. That way I'll be able to see through the wall when we place that on. If I toggle on my glass house view, you can see where those cabinets are on the other side. So it's sometimes a uh, useful view to be able to see that. So to begin with, let's use our pass-through tool. We'll just come over here and uh, click that. So now you can see the, uh, the pass-through. And um, let me go ahead and open this up. And uh, let's go ahead and change the uh, pass-through information. Let's set that to be 50 inches. And then the uh, height of uh, 53 and uh, 5 eighths. By the way, you can enter in um, either fractions or decimals in here. Uh, and then our floor to bottom at 35 and 3 eighths. Now as soon as I take off the casing around this, which I'm going to do, it will be difficult to select that in your elevation view because you can't get any handles to uh, um, move handles. Notice there's a little square here. So it's just a note, you'll have to grab that in your plan view. So I'm going to toggle that casing off and I'm also going to remove the frame. So it will be almost impossible for me to grab that. Let's leave the frame on for just now so I can still grab that in our uh, view. And then I'm just going to slide this over quite close to the edge. Um, I have to dimension that to get it exact wherever I want that. So now I've got that opening approximately where I want. Let's go ahead and open that up and remove the frame back off of that. And again, it's still selected. I can move it, but I believe as soon as I select off of it, now I can't get that opening anymore. So you'll just have to go to your plan view and then you can grab that. One of the things you'll notice in my doorway, it says doorway. If you want to change those labels, there's a label tab down here, so you can specify a label. Let's just go ahead and type in uh, pass-through, so you can override those. And again, if you want to move that, this is where you can move it and uh, set that dimension here. So I'll highlight the dimension, and I'm just going to make that 4 and a 16th for now. So I've got that pass-through positioned. Let's go back to our elevation view from the, uh, actually let's turn off our soffit. Let's turn that layer off so we can see through it. And that way we can see exactly where that cabinet is. So the first cabinet that we have here, you'll notice there's a 16. So let's just uh, slide that through our opening. You'll notice there's a slight gap here that's going to accommodate the uh, door width on there. So it's pretty much flush when you look at a side elevation view of that with that wall. In a 3D view using our overhead camera tool, let's zoom in. Now you can see the uh, pass-through. One issue that we have to resolve here is we need that countertop to extend through that opening. And so the easiest way to do that is I'm just going to group select these three cabinets. And the tool that you have down here is generate a custom countertop. So you can think of that countertop as being removed and becoming a separate object. So let's go ahead and click that button. And that now removes it. We can individually edit that countertop. Of course, I could draw that by hand, but it's quicker to do it that way. Let's toggle our views here so we have both views. And um, temporarily, let's turn off our wall cabinet. So I'm going to use the uh, 
layer properties turn that layer off just temporarily now we can see that we have that so here's my uh, custom countertop and actually let's uh, I missed that filler so let's grab that too actually we'll just delete that countertop since I missed the filler I should have grabbed it but we'll just pull that over on top of it now you'll notice when I highlight that there's a series of diamonds that creates a break everywhere there's a cabinet and I'm just gonna slide this first break over and match the uh, snap that onto the area of the wall and then we'll snap that break over there because I really only need that one if I wanted to clean these up I could do the same thing but I'm not gonna worry about that right now and now I can just simply pull this uh, cabinet right through this countertop sorry right through this area And we'll snap that back and I was off on that edge just a little bit so we'll just pull that over and snap that into place. Now you can see if I zoom in over here we've pulled that countertop right through that wall area. Now the next thing we want to do on the uh, wall cabinet is maximize our view. So I want to take this cabinet and I want to make the on the back side of it there's a setting here to say match front so that will place the exact same and repeat that on the back and let's see on the moldings let's go ahead and uh, let's add a light rail on that so let's go into our library for moldings and let's see here we'll just grab a simple profile and I'm going to set that profile to be one and a half. Five eighths is fine. Actually, let's change it to a half inch. And then from the bottom, and then we'll set that to be, uh, let's see, we set it to be one and a half. And notice I get the preview update. The, uh, oops, wrong, horizontal, should be vertical. So you'll notice that you get a preview and um, in that case I entered in one and a half inches for the vertical offset. If I want that to go on the bottom of the cabinet you need to make it a negative number. These vertical and horizontal offsets are quite helpful if you're going to be stacking a few different moldings uh, like a crown molding. I'll probably get into that here um, when we talk about the, the dining room. Let's see, final thing I want to do on the uh, Let's go ahead on, on the shelves. Let's go into the materials on the shelves and let's select a uh, glass material. So just go into my plan and let's see if we can find a standard glass. So that way it'll change the uh, interior of that to a glass shelf. So now we can see all the way through that. And if we rotate around Let's go ahead and pull that around. I'm in an overhead view, so a little bit more difficult. So now all we have to do is uh, fix up our uh, colors and, and materials to make that look good. So to paint those cabinets, let's open up the library and uh, you'll find a number of paint manufacturers. Benjamin Moore Paints, if you know the exact paint code, which I happen to know in this case, is white Huron. Let's just grab that paint and You'll notice that my icon changes to a spray can or you can toggle that on to a stain mode down here in the lower section. That works as a stain mode and you can also include the components so if you just want to change individual items you can do that in a stain mode. If you change it for the entire object notice that it changes the entire cabinet and then there's a room mode so I can change it for the entire room but I'm going to change that back to a uh, spray can and we'll just change the entire cabinets to a uh, to a white. Now with respect to the pass-through I did take the liberty to create a uh, section view through that area just to show the details and just using the CAD tools put in the information on how these two boxes adjoin to each other and then the callouts for the additional details. You can get a closer look at this on the sample plan if you want to download that and take a closer look. 
I have the full construction drawings up there. You can investigate.